Hi everyone, welcome to my first impression of the rest of the holiday collection for 2021 from Pat McGrath Labs. The single highlighter and the two Lux quads just arrived yesterday afternoon and I was very very excited to immediately do this video because I know a lot of you are excited for it as well. Needless to say that the glorious fast uh, express shipping experience that I had with my Celestial Odyssey palette um, did not repeat itself. However, that said, it did not really happen for anyone because uh, apparently there was a massive delay with shipping out the quads and the highlighter and the uh, blush trios because uh, even people who usually receive Pat McGrath's products within a few hours, I want to say, after they're shipped out like Morgan Turner here on YouTube, even she only posted her video yesterday. Same holds for Alicia from Kinky Sweat, so massive delays all around. And yes, I understand, they're very busy, it's the holidays, blah blah, but we've been saying that she needs to expand her distribution center already for like two years straight so I'm really hoping she's working on a solution and that's all I can say about that. The way we're going to do this video is I'm going to break it down first we're going to apply and talk about the highlighter then I'm going to do swatches of the two quads I'm going to do a look with one of them I'm going to work in a little bit so I can't really show up with two different eyeballs so I'm going to be using the bronze borealis uh, eyeshadow quad for today and later in the day when I get back from work I'm going to do a bit of comparison swatches um, and yeah, I'm going to give you a lot of thoughts that I've had on this collection and uh, feelings and sentiments. I anticipate this to be a pretty long video, so I want to immediately jump into the products. And the first one I want to talk about is the highlighter. The highlighter comes in this beautiful purple little box over here. Very reminiscent actually of the holiday collection from last year, which also had a lot of um, these sort of like crown jewel, you know, um, inspiration on it. The outside box, of course, is not the most interesting thing about this highlighter. The actual packaging of the highlighter is pretty stunning. It is a completely like a gold, you know, her usual black lacquer, but then gold. We've had a Decadence palette in that packaging. We also have the um, puck from last year, the highlighter from last year, the heavyweight um, one that came in this um, round, compact, a little bit vintage style is also gold. This is beautiful. This feels very luxe. It has the Pat McGrath logo uh, across it, not with the um, like elevated lettering, but just like with the letters as we got on the blushes and the highlighter from the uh, Divine Blush collection as well in the spring. And then the actual highlighter, The one of the biggest reasons I wanted to purchase this highlighter is because it comes in her Bakes Chalet formula. So that is like one of those like um, Blitz VR type uh, formulas that you're very familiar with in her eyeshadow palettes. She did release a highlighter in this formula as well also earlier this year with her Valentine collection, the Divine Glow highlighter. I want to say it's the Divine Glow. Um, and this one looks even more stunning because the, the packaging is exceptionally festive. There is a gorgeous like crown embossing on it and the embossing feels deep enough that I feel like it will last you a while even if you're using the highlighter very intensely. Uh, and just by looking at it, the highlighter seems to have like a champagne warm peachy glow to it. But I am going to swatch it now for you. We're going to compare it to the one from last year, to Divine Glow and to Golden Nectar from the Divine Blush collection. And then I'm going to apply it uh, on my cheeks. So the first thing is I want to swatch the highlighter for you and uh, I wanted to show you because it's this baked gelée formula, there's really no powder kick up there. I just picked up the product like this on my finger, no issues. And I am going to now swatch it for you. This looks like a light, uh, very warm pink or peach with a bit of like a silver reflect to it. It is for sure warmer than the highlighter she gave us uh, last year, which I'm gonna be honest with you was not my favorite one in terms of its tones. It's called Golden Champagne, but I would much rather call it Pink Champagne. So this is the highlighter from last year, completely different formula. This is more in that like dense powder creamy formula. and. Um, this highlighter has a much cooler tone to it, so when you compare it to the one from this year, you will immediately tell this is more pigmented, Normal, not more pigmented, but it's more opaque, uh, it's darker in tone and it is cooler in tone. So I think if this was too dark for you, perhaps this is going to work. 
Now next to that I want to swatch the highlighter from the Spring collection, so the uh, blush collection. This is uh, the shade Golden Nectar, which is a gorgeous pressed powder, but with the most silky feeling uh, to it. This is a gorgeous, like, golden peach highlighter. Personally, one of my favorite tones of highlighter ever. And you will see that this is actually quite comparable to the new highlighter, but the new highlighter seems to take a more pink undertone compared to this, which is warmer and more golden. And finally, we have the other baked formula of highlighter that she has released uh, that was earlier this year. This is the Divine Glow highlighter from her Valentine's collection, which is a gorgeous um, pink with a golden sheen to it. And when you apply it on your cheeks, you mostly see that gorgeous golden sheen against beautiful formula. Really, really love the formula of um, these products, the, the two baked gelé products, because I think they look very flattering on the skin. This highlighter is a very buildable one because you can apply it very subtly, you can build it up for to be more shiny. And it has this sort of cool pink tone with the warm gold overlay. Without further ado, let's just grab a brush and apply the highlighter onto my cheeks. It picks up uh, quite easily on a brush. Okay, I hope my uh, light is going to cooperate so that you can see how the highlighter is going to look when it applies onto the cheeks. Okay, this is quite shiny and very smooth. And surprisingly, I have the feeling that on my face it takes a uh, cooler, like silvery flip to it almost. Can you see that? Okay, I hope that uh, you are able to see how incredibly reflective that is. Uh, it is very smooth on the skin, I don't feel like it's accentu accentuating anything, but it is taking a very like cool, almost like white silver cast on my personal skin tone. Um, I can say that that is my favorite. It is highlighting in the sense that I don't feel like it's too dark for me. Um, if you have a very fair skin tone, and that is a problem that I've seen with almost all of past highlighters, if you have a very very fair skin tone, I don't know how this is going to look on you. And same counts for if you have a very deep skin tone, because if this is taking such a cool tone silver reflect on me, is it going to look ashy on you? I don't know. I don't understand this making one highlighter to fit all skin tones um, decision. It has always puzzled me because as a makeup artist she probably knows that uh, one glove doesn't fit all. Please do let me know what you, what you think about it, how is it looking on you. It's looking quite cool toned on me, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I do plenty of cool toned looks where I would like to have something a little bit more cool toned. I'm not saying that I don't like it. I'm a bit surprised at the undertones it's taking on my skin. All right, so and now let's move into the uh, two Lux Quads that arrived in the corresponding beautiful uh, bejeweled, not bejeweled, but like crown jewel decorated boxes. This is the box for Bronze Borealis. This is the box for Deep Space Divinity. They are beautiful but they are absolutely not the most exciting thing about this um, video, so let's move into the quads. If you're anything like me, you've probably already watched a ton of videos which have uh, pointed out all the differences between the packaging and pen sizes of these quads in comparison to other quads, but I'm going to point them out for you once more, just in case you hadn't noticed or this is the first video you are seeing. This is not her standard look squat packaging, this is her standard look squat packaging. I think size-wise the actual boxes are the same, but as you can see on this one here you have her logo as this like a uh, little gold plates with like the race lettering in gold with the Pat McGrath Labs logo. Here you just have Pat McGrath Labs written in letters, nothing fancy schmancy. This feels far less luxe to me. The pan sizes in the new quad, this is Bronze Borealis and this is the uh, Voyeuristic Vixen quad from the Spring collection. You can see the pan sizes are considerably smaller and they look almost unflattering against the, 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 the size of the rest. Maybe they are offending me because I'm used to those bigger pants. I don't know. It's something about this looks really like 
offensive to me visually. So I feel like instead of talking we should just move into the swatches of these quads because uh, swatches tell much more than words. This is the Bronze Borealis. I'm going to swatch... Um, I'm actually going to swatch first the mauve Rosy Tones and then I'm going to swatch the more champagne Tones. And next we're going to swatch the Deep Space Divinity Quad and what I'm going to do there is I'm going to first swatch these two shades next to the Bronze and the Champagne from the Bronze Borealis Quad, I'll do that on purpose. And then we're going to swatch the mauve Brown, like a Bordeaux Brown and the um, Duochrome shade. From the Bronze Borealis Quad I'm going to start with the mauve Brown and the Rosy uh, Bronzy Pink shade. So here you have the matte shade, very beautiful, very soft and very pigmented. And here you have the bronzy shade, quite a beautiful tone, beautiful rich metallic shade. So here you have the champagne, which for whatever reason is swatching very bizarrely. It's almost like balling up on me, I don't really know what's going on. And this is the uh, bronzy metallic shade, again very creamy, very smooth, both of them are, you know, smooth metallic shades. And now let's move into the Deep Space Divinity where I'm going to start again with the champagne gold and the more like bronzy gold shade. So these are the two shades. So this is the more champagne and this is the more bronze tone shade, copper tone shade, I don't really know how to call it. And finally let's swatch the Bordeaux red and the duochrome, the blue-brown duochrome. Again the matte shade feels uh, very nice and smooth, it has this like maroon bordeaux tone to it and this is a classic blue brown so here are swatches of the two quads for you um i feel like swatches in this specific uh, case tell much more than a thousand of my rambling words can you tell the difference between these four shades over here like the two neutrals from bronze borealis and the two neutrals from Deep Space Divinity. Can you can you tell the difference? Because I can barely tell the difference. And I'm pretty good with undertones and um, different like takes on even neutral shades. I can barely tell the difference between these eyeshadows. I think they're going to look rather similar on the eyeballs. The two mattes seem to be fine. I am going to uh, say this. The Bordeaux matte shade from the Deep Space Divinity quad. I'm a little bit afraid of that shade because uh, these types of shades are not super flattering on me. They usually pull quite purple toned and I don't look flattering in those types of shades. And I'm afraid the same can be said about this uh, duochrome shade. Now when it comes to the Deep Space Divinity Quad, a lot of people have rightfully pointed out that it reminds them uh, of the Makeup Geek and M many MUA palette that was released many many years ago. Now trust me, I don't think uh, Dame Pat was duping many MUA, in fact I would be surprised if she even knew who many MUA is, but in fact the color story is quite similar and with that I wanted to lead up to a comparison swatch that I wanted to do for you, because in that specific eyeshadow palette with many MUA was one of Makeup Geek's most iconic eyeshadows, the shade Insomnia, which originally came as a pigment which I have and I have pressed into an eyeshadow since then. I bought it in 2013 or 14, whenever it was that Makeup Geek first released it. So let me show you my little pressed pen over here. This is um, Makeup Geek's Insomnia. Let me hold it up next to the Duochrome from Pat McGrath. I hope that you can see that they are pretty much the same thing. And now I wanted to swatch Insomnia for you next to the Duochrome from Pat McGrath. You can tell they are the exact same shade. Um, if anything, I feel like this one maybe looks a bit shinier than the one from Pat McGrath. And you can already probably tell from my tone that I am exceptionally disappointed in the two quads. There's not a single more interesting, more sparkly, uh, eyeshadow in there, there's not a single texture that would be considered something 
you know Pat McGrath worthy. Let me just point out, this is the Voyeuristic Vixen quad from the Spring Collection where you had this incredibly textured shade which looks glorious onto the eyelids. The look squads from last year each had at least one very special shade. We got stuff like Lavendering, uh, like Hypnotique, like even Golden Polaris in the Interstellar Icon quad which looks like a boring neutral. It looks magical onto the lids. None of these shades promise to look magical. Do not get me wrong, they are beautiful, richly pigmented, very smooth metallics. Um, I'm sure the, qu the quality is impeccable for this specific formula from Pat McGrath. But I wouldn't call this a look squad. These eyeshadows could easily have been in something like the Celestial Divinity or the Celestial Odyssey palette. Uh, and the quality would have been perfectly fine and satisfactory for those. But there is no added special factor. In fact, I think there are a few more interesting shades in the Celestial Odyssey palette compared to the quads. These are her looks quads, okay? What is looks about these quads? If I were a first-time customer of Pat McGrath and I had heard so much about her eyeshadows, uh, I had heard so much about the different textures, the sparkles, the, you know, the complexity, the depth, all of these like intricate little details that add on to the quality of Pat McGrath compared to even other luxury brands. If I had heard all of that and one of these quads was my first Pat McGrath product, I would have been like, um, they're fine, they're fine. I don't understand what the fuss is all about though. The duochrome shade is so muted, there, there's not a single sparkle in any of these eyeshadows. I am so disappointed. And the fact that the four neutrals look so similar to each other, they are offered as a bundle, like you can buy stuff as a bundle. So it should be implied that there is enough variety between these two quads that they look different enough from each other for us to purchase both of them. So there you have it. The day has arrived that I am bitterly disappointed by a Pat McGrath product. Now I'm going to continue rambling while I do my makeup. Like I said, I'm going to use the Bronze Borealis quad and I'm going to pretty much do the look that everyone has already done. I'm going to put this in my outer corner and crease this in the outer part of the lid, inner part of the lid and inner corner. Um, I am not really inspired to do much more with these eyeshadows. While I was thinking about this video I realized that the even the Eternal Eden quad which was released in the beginning of the year was again an eyeshadow quad which technically didn't really contain a very like sparkly shade. It contained um, a satin shimmer, two mattes and this very very intense metallic mauve purple shade. This is by the way blending out uh, really nicely, it's a very ni nice tone of eyeshadow. So even in there there was no like super sparkly and textured shade like there was in Vixen. But I feel like because the tones of that quad and the inspiration behind it were Valentine's Day, it didn't really bother me as much and the packaging was still as luxe, um, the eyeshadow pants were still the normal size, just the combination of factors combined with how bland these eyeshadows are bland. They're not bad, they're just boring. Next I'm going to take a little bit of glitter glue and I'm just going to apply the intensifies from Pat McGrath all over the uh, lid. The only thing I can imagine might be the reason why the they have cut on the luxurious, you know, experience of the packaging is shortage of raw materials and um, a lot of delays with delivery of things. I've seen that firsthand um, at the lab where I work because we've had a lot of shortages of reagents, of plastics. It's really like, it's almost like doing a drinking game and wondering each day what thing is going to run out next. I'm going to take the um, rosy, like bronze shade, it's actually a really beautiful tone and I'm going to just apply that using my finger here onto the outer portion of the lid. Next I'm going to go into what's probably the most impactful shade in this palette which is the uh, bronzy one. I think this one will have probably the most uh, shine to it. Even between these two eyeshadows, there is everything is so one note, like mono layer, no depth, no complexity, no anything to it. It's just so blah. Taking a somewhat smaller 
packing brush and going into the light champagne shade I'm going to apply that into my inner corners it's very interesting um, this metallic shade and also one of the eyeshadows from Deep Space Divinity has this very like powdery texture to it like a metallic with a very like powdery texture which is almost like balling up when you start to swatch it I don't really know how to describe it I don't know that I've ever seen an eyeshadow that does that from Pat McGrath but maybe right now I'm also being exceptionally critical because I'm so disappointed on my lower lash line I'm going to do nothing too special I'm just going to take this metallic shade again and line my lower lashes This has to be one of the most forgettable eyeshadow looks that I've ever done in the past years um, and I can't believe that I have done it with a Pat McGrath product. Uh, I have the urge to bust out a couple of my other um, eyeshadow palettes to put something sparkly on because even the two lit shades I can barely distinguish one from the other. Honestly, you could easily tell that I have only one eyeshadow on my lids and it's not the case. Um, I am going to take the highlighter now and I just want to apply a little bit of that onto the center of the lid to give a little bit of something more. To, um, I think it's safe to say that I would not recommend that you go out and buy this. I would say go out and get yourself a Celestial Odyssey palette because you're getting 18 shades, a lot of different types of textures, colors, super beautiful shades. Uh, don't get these look squads because if you buy two of these quads, you've already paid 90% uh, of a big mothership palette. Just like add $10 more and get yourself a mothership palette with proper formulas in it. These are so disappointing. I cannot... It really hurts me to say that I'm disappointed by a Pat McGrath product. Uh, I will probably be decluttering these. I was thinking of maybe keeping them because I don't know if I have the hard to... you know what these feel like? These feel like when you were a kid and it's Christmas and um, you were hoping to get a Barbie doll and they give you, you know, a beautiful sweater. It's a great sweater, great quality, very practical. You are going to get use out of it, but you really wanted that shiny Barbie doll to make you happy. This is the metaphor that I can give you for how this feels like for me. As someone who is Pat McGrath stan and who always expects the best of her and even when I've seen promo images of uh, her products before and I've thought, oh, these don't look the best. As soon as they've arrived here, I've been like, my mind is blown. I have no words. These are so beautiful. Uh, All right, guys, it's late afternoon. I'm back from work. I tried to fix my face makeup as much as possible. I removed as much as I could the eyeshadow look that I had going on with Bronze Borealis. And we are now going to do a look with uh, Deep Space Divinity, just so I can give you my full rounded disappointment with these quads. I've already applied some eyeshadow primer and what I'm going to do next is take the um, maroon purple burgundy shade. Um, I am afraid I'm not going to like this shade, but that is for personal reasons, because I do not look good in shades like this. These sort of like more maroon purples um, are the exact reason why I got rid of my modern renaissance palette. I want to like them, but they just, they make me look really, really tired and sickly. So I don't, I'm not the hugest fan, but that is a personal preference. That has nothing to do with the quality of the eyeshadow. So I'm packing this color onto my lid. What is going on here now? This probably isn't completely optimal because I just removed the eyeshadow. I dried my eyelids from the oils as much as I could. And I'm just trying to blend this eyeshadow out. I think you can clearly tell this has very purple tones to it. So this is a red that leans more purple and not brown. I don't know what you guys think. Maybe I'm being like extra negative right now. But I don't, I don't see myself, knowing myself, reaching for this specific matte eyeshadow. I have a lot of other, like, maroon, red, brown leaning tones from Pat McGrath that I would much uh, rather lean into than this one. I don't think this is going to be one that I'm going to be like, oh, let me grab that Deep Space Divinity quad because of this shade. Nope, that's mm, unlikely to happen. It's very pigmented. I feel like it may be sticking to some of the parts of my eyelid that were a bit more wet. But I don't want to hold that against the eyeshadow because, like I said, I 
just removed my previous look and that might affect the quality of how this is applying. Uh, otherwise it's blending out fine. I'm not experiencing any issues besides the fact that it's becoming really dark here where probably my lids were still a bit wet. I'm now going to take a little bit of intensifies again and I'm going to apply that onto the inner corner and then the rest of the lid. I'm going to take the duochrome shade on my lid and I'm going to apply this my this one, uh, the more champagne one, into my inner corners and I'm going to just apply the duochrome shade uh, using my fingers. That is applying very very pretty and very duochrome -y. But again, <laughs> these are just not my tones. I've you saw earlier in the swatch that this is pretty much identical to Insomnia and as much as I enjoy the duochrome of Insomnia and I always admire it so much when I swatch it, every time I wear it I feel like it just does not fit me. I prefer these types of duochromes when they have a more like orange brown base with a lime green shift to them that I feel like that suits me better than these sort of tones. This eyeshadow is looking very pretty, very duochrome-y, but again, it's just a metallic duochrome. Uh, if you have Nabla eyeshadows or Natasha Denona eyeshadows or, you know, it's you're not getting anything special, okay? I just said it like a hundred million times. I'm going to give everything a nice blend. Everything applied really well. You can see the tones of these two eyeshadows work really well together, so they are meant to be used together and they work really well together. I have no complaints about that. I want to stress again for the millionth time, the quality of the eyeshadows is fine. It's just that they are nothing special and not what you expect of a holiday look squad. I'm going to apply this one now, the champagne shade, into my inner corners. And I think just to complete the look on my lower lash line and try the last shade as well, I'm just going to take this one which is like a bronze with like slight reddish tones to it and I'm going to apply that onto my lower lashes. So here you have a look with the Deep Space Divinity Quad. Um, like I said, the dual chrome is fine, the red shade is fine, they're fine. That's all I can say about these quads. They're fine. They're nothing extraordinary. In order to illustrate to you why I'm disappointed, I wanted to pull out the Interstellar Icon Quad from last year, because initially this quad was very heavily compared to this Deep Space Divinity Quad, because they seemed to have a very similar vibe to them, with like this like reddish purple and the blue duochrome and a bit of like a champagne shade. So here you have a comparison of the two eyeshadow palettes. Um, now that you've seen the Deep Space Divinity on my eyes and if you have Interstellar Icon you already know these are absolutely not the same shades. But I want to swatch some of these textures against each other for you so that I can illustrate with a swatch of an eyeshadow what I mean by the eyeshadows in this look squad are nothing compared to what we have gotten in previous years. So to start off with, here is a shade called Golden Aurora. Uh, and the corresponding shade in, that, in the Interstellar Icon quad would be this one here. This is the shade Golden Polaris. Let me tell you, Golden Aurora and Golden Polaris are nothing like each other in terms of how beautiful they are. So this is Golden Aurora. Can you see these little balls that I have to smoothen forever and ever? And here you have a swatch of Golden Polaris. Now you tell me that this shade is not leaps and bounds beyond this one in terms of how dimensional it is. This is just so flat compared to this. If we had gotten this tone of eyeshadow with this complexity, I would have been really, really happy because I love Golden Polaris. Last year when I received the quad, you can watch my video, I applied that shade and I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? How is this so beautiful? The next I want to compare, of course, are the blues. So let's compare the uh, blue-brown duochrome that we have from the new quad versus Hypnotic from last year. You can tell just from my finger how much more inter interesting Hypnotic is. Um, so here you have the blue-brown pigment from this year and here you have a swatch of Hypnotic. You can tell that first of all they are entirely different shades, this is uh, so much more like that um, classic blue-brown 
uh, with the blue duochrome being like this teal shift whereas this is so much more like a blurple and it's again so much more dimensional, so much sparklier, so much more interesting. You can layer this over other eyeshadows to get very interesting effects or you can punch it on its own. And I think as a last example I want to swatch for you also Divine Dahlia, this shade here from Interstellar Icon versus the like boring bronzy shade we get in the new quad. And again, please look at those balling up things. Um, th these are not something that I'm complaining for just to have something to complain for. They are something that I'm noticing with these eyeshadows that freaks me out. It's w really strange. I don't think I've ever seen this with eyeshadows from Pat before. I mean, it's applying fine and you can smoothen those balls out, but... And then we have Divine Dahlia, which is rich and beautiful in one swipe. And when you shine an artificial light on it, you can see beautiful green sparkles in it. This is pretty, but nothing special super forgettable. I will forget all about it tomorrow. Okay, I want to pull out my subliminal palette from Pat because I want to compare one of the uh, astral shades in here to the blue-brown duochrome because they kind of reminded me of uh, each other. I know they're going to be very different but I want to swatch this one next to the one from the quad. So here you have the shade from the quad that I can't remember the name of and this is the Astro shade from the Subliminal palette, so the uh, duochrome topper shade. Uh, this is so much more icy blue, this is much more green teal. So they are quite different from each other. I'm curious what happens if I layer the one from Subliminal over the one from the new quad. Well, you just kind of change the shift a little bit and make maybe you make this shadow a little bit more you know sparkly. Next I'd like to swatch the red from Midnight Sun, this beautiful brown red here against the red from Deep Space Divinity. This is Midnight Sun, this is Deep Space Divinity and I prefer the tone of the one from Midnight Sun so much more because it has more of a terracotta brown read to it whereas this one is so much more purple as you can tell from this swatch. The last shade I want to compare the red matte to is one that came in the Voyeuristic Vixen quad, so I want to compare it to this one, which is again one of those more like brown leaning reds, just so you can tell when I surround the uh, red from the new quad with the reds that we have gotten previously. This is very terracotta, this is a bit more of a, like a mauve brown red and this is definitely purple leaning. I've decided to do just one more comparison swatch for you because I do not think that I have any desire to be swatching um, bronze and champagne shades for comparison purposes because I think I'm going to literally die of boredom. So we're going to do one more uh, final swatch and that is going to be the mauve shade from Eternal Eden next to the mauve shade from the Bronze Borealis quad, so this one over here. So this is the one from Bronze Borealis, this is the one from Eternal Eden and I can tell that there is a difference because the one from Bronze Borealis is a deeper tone uh, and it's a bit less cool tone but this is just like a deeper, I think the one from Bronze Borealis is just a deeper version of this one with like slightly more like brown mauve in it. So let's just do that. If you want any comparison swatches between the quads and anything else in uh, the Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette realm, then please let me know if I have the palette. I will definitely swatch it uh, for you on demand. But as it is, I feel very uninspired to do more comparison swatches because I just cannot, I cannot even stand to look at these quads. I am so disappointed in them. Uh, yes, the theme of this video is disappointed let down and like pretty bumped out. Looking at this whole collection, if there is one piece that I would absolutely recommend to you is the Celestial Odyssey eyeshadow palette because you are getting gorgeous formulas in here. You're getting a variety of different uh, formulas because you have your mattes, you have the, the creamy metallic shades, you have some interesting sparkly, duochrome flaky type of shades with a bit more texture to them. Uh, the new quads are just very basic formulas in very basic colors. The Celestial Odyssey Mega Palette is fabulous and I think the highlighter is really nice depending on your preference of for undertones in a highlighter. But the two quads... Mm -mm. If you want to get the true Lux Quad experience, 
get yourself one of the quads from 2018 or 2019 if you can still score those. Um, otherwise, wait for a new release next year or save your money for a mothership palette. But yeah, by me, do not buy these quads. I think you're going to be really disappointed. Of course, please keep in mind that these are also my personal views. A lot of people have a completely different take on this collection and on eyeshadow. Uh, eyeshadow in general. A, a lot of people actually don't like her very like dry sparkly eyeshadows. I don't understand them but they probably also don't understand me so take my opinion with a grain of salt. But um, I think I've tried to explain as well as possible why I find these disappointing. So if you were hoping for uh, the same thing that I was hoping for which is a repeat of last year's look squad with all those beautiful um, dimensional shades, the sparkles, you're not getting any of that. And you're getting that one duochrome, uh, which is very beautiful, but it's one of those duochromes that have been done and overdone. This is basically MAC blue-brown. I'm very sorry to deliver such a negative uh, first impression on the Pat McGrath Labs holiday collection of all things. Uh, so I want to finish it on a high note and just tell you to get the Celestial Odyssey palette if you would like to get something from this collection. If you picked up the quads, I'm very curious what you think about them. Let's discuss them in my comment section. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!